I will bless our God at all times, and God's praise shall forever be on my lips. My soul makes its boast in God. For every mountain that God has brought us over, and every trial that God has seen us through, for every blessing bestowed upon us, God, I give you the praise. I greet you this morning in the name of God, the creator of life. Jesus, God's son and word made visible, and the Holy Spirit, the life force, the breath of God that is bestowed upon us. Well, I have to begin by giving honor where honor is due, and that honor is to First Congregational. You all have rolled out the red carpet for this child coming from Norfolk, Virginia. I was met first at the airport by Dana McCray, who received me as a mother figure, took care of me just as she would take care of her mother, brought me straight to the hotel, got me into my room, and then proceeded to wipe down the room, taking care to make sure that there were no germs anywhere and that I would be able to breathe free just as she would take care of her mother. Thank you, Dana. My heart is full. And then, Friday night, I had the chance to hang out with a few of your members, and then we went to the Lincoln Theater, where we had the most wonderful time at an opera. And if you think that welcome was a lot, Saturday, yesterday afternoon. I was the guest at the home of Al Waddell and Alan Baker. And if any of you have ever been to that home, you know what a marvelous treat that is. And from the moment I saw that magnificent space and the gardens and the flowers, from the minute we had the most amazing meal that you could imagine, and then on top of that, we had church. We went to church, we had music. Well, First Church, you have been a wonderful, a wonderful place of hospitality to me, and I'm grateful. I bring you greetings, too, from all the places where I'm honored to serve as minister, as mother, and as elder. My home church, New Macedonia Afro-Christian United Church of Christ in Norfolk, Virginia, where the Reverend Patricia Crawley Ricks is the pastor, and I bring you greetings as the elder of Franklinton Center at Bricks, which is located in Whittakers, North Carolina. We are located on the grounds of what was an antebellum plantation. However, we have transformed that space into sacred ground, and it is a sacred model there of resistance and resilience and survival, and now it flows with the fifth stream as a life-giving center for the entire United Church of Christ, working for justice and equality and freedom. And it's also now the archive of the Afro-Christian Convention, where we are documenting the story, the journey, the contributions of the mothers and fathers of the Afro-Christian tradition, past and present, and their walk with God. And I also greet you as the mother of the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries, where last summer I was consecrated as one of their elder mothers, where the Reverend Dr. Yvette Flunder is our leader. Let us pray. Have your way, God. Have your way. You are the potter. We are the clay. Mold us and make us after your will. Mold this gathered congregation after your will. Mold me, your preacher, and this sermonic reflection after your will. By the power of your Holy Spirit, now teach and touch us. Pray and bless us. Bless all of us who simply need a word. Have your way with us this morning. It's in your name and in the name of the Holy Spirit that I pray. Well, in the gospel reading, of Mark, the faith of the disciples is being tested. And strong storms and winds are rocking and rolling their lifeboat 
And where is Jesus? Asleep at the switch. In the Psalter reading of Psalm 46, we are wrestling with another question. And that question is, what in the world anchors you and holds you and sustains you when the very foundations that we have come to depend upon, believe in, are suddenly shaking and moving and turning our lives upside down. In my 85 years of life, I have lived through many storms and the time in which we live is no exception. To use Dr. Martin Luther King's word, this is the first fierce urgency of now, a time in which storms are raging and foundations are shifting. The storms are raging in our nation as our democracy is being threatened by autocracy. The storms are raging as the gains of the second reconstruction are being dismantling, challenging our right to vote. The storms are che raging as our vision of a beloved inclusive, diverse nation is being challenged by the idolatry of white supremacy and privilege and power. The storms are raging as pressure is rolling to whitewash history. There are at least 50 groups with at least 300 members actively lobbying for the banning of books by African-American authors and the African-American history at the national, state, and local levels. So when the storms are raging, there's a thin line between fear and faith, between hope and doubt. And the question as we gather for worship on this Sunday, is there a word? Well, the word emerges from today's scripture read in the earlier service as well as today. And that word from the Gospel of Mark is that faith, our faith, can conquer fear. And the word from the psalmist read in the earliest is that there is a God who is our refuge and strength and who offers to us a river of life giving water. And so that's where my sermon topic is rooted. The topic, there is a river. In the midst of everything, that can turn your life upside down, knock you off your course, cause you to lose your way. In the midst of world-changing phenomena, where the earth is changing and mountains are shaking in the heart of the sea, where waters are roaring and forming, causing even mountains to tremble, there are some things that are temporary, and then there are those that are permanent. And the psalmist is speaking about that which can ground us and anchor us and center us. We have a God who is a river of life-giving water. We got a faith flowing directly from God and from the river. There are three things that the message around us in Scripture speaks to us about. The first affirmation that comes out of the scripture reference is that we are called when everything is shaping all around us to remember that we are rooted in God, creator of the heaven and earth, our life source. The second affirmation is you don't have to fear because there is a river of life that is flowing from God, a river of love, a river of justice, a river of peace, a river reminding us of a world that God intends. And the third affirmation is that from the river are streams that make glad the city of God. The streams are word of God becoming flesh and spirit, moving to the rhythm of a different narrative in our time. For the past two years, facing the fierce urgency of now, a group of elders and myself have been writing a narrative for troubled times. We've been writing a narrative rooted in God, a narrative rooted in hope, a narrative that is now recognized and flowing as the Afro-Christian Convention, a fifth stream flowing from a river of life into the United Church of Christ. The elders are witnessing and testifying to what faith in God can do. We write the story of the Afro-Christian Convention, which represented the majority of African-American churches that entered the United Church of Christ 
at the time of its founding in 1957. But the story, their story, is absent, invisible from any of the records of that historical moment describing four predominantly white streams flowing together as a united and uniting presence. However, to ignore the story doesn't negate the existence of that story. To silence the story does not prevent the power of the story to live. A Zimbabwean proverb says, until the lions have their own storytellers, hunters will always be the hero in their story. As elders now, it was important that we tell the story, that we stand on ground that would not give, that we have a mooring and an anchor. We therefore wrote as unashamedly black and unapologetically Christian. We go home to our taproot, the motherland of Africa, the center of our gravity. Our story does not begin when we were in chains. It begins in wholeness. It begins with us as family, living in freedom and harmony. And like the 46th Psalm, the, storm, the story affirms there is a God, and there is a river, and there are streams from that river that make glad the city of God. Our story begins, there is a God. The mothers and fathers of the Afro-Christian Convention were African, connected to a God and a worldview that began in Africa. Their first encounter with the divine was the power and presence of light. The divine was life and declared all life as sacred, human and earth and air and water and birds and trees. And the divine was the life connection, connecting life, the living and the dead, the yet to be born. And the God of the mothers and fathers of the Afro-Christian Convention was a God of freedom, flowing not from the top down, but flowing in a circular context, from the past to the present, from the present to the past. And the present is wedded to the past, and the past to the future. The God of the mothers and fathers, when facing their fierce urgency of now, was a God of life and a God of freedom who shared their common lot, whether in their native home or on slave ships, on plantations or in hush harbors. God was present, calling life out of death, bringing order out of chaos, creating and recreating the spirit of resistance and resilience that was central to their ability to be clothed in their right mind in a world that demeaned and denied their very humanity. In the fierce urgency of now, our story continues. It's a story of hope flowing from God as a river of love, of truth, of justice, of wholeness, equipping and empower one with spirit. Where there is spirit, there is power. There is energy, there is passion, and it gives meaning to our existence. Moving the God as spirit, moving like a river, directing, empowering, and infusing into us spirit. The spirit moving like a river, reconnecting that which has been disconnected. The spirit flowing across all the guardrails that have divided us one from the other. The spirit reminding us that we are inextricably bound one to the other. The African word, Ubuntu. I am because you are, and because you are, I can be also. My humanity is connected to your humanity. Vincent Harding, African-American artist, put pen to paper and described the black struggle in America for freedom as a river flowing with faith, flowing with courage, flowing with hope, flowing with spirit. Benson reminds us that the river is in us, liberating us as persons, teaching us what it means to be human. The river is the life force, the spirit force, keeping us moving forward in spite of the terrors of the night. However far the river flows, it never forgets its source. Empowered by a deep well of faith, spirituality, creativity, genius, and freedom, a river of hope and truth has been flowing from a motherland of Africa in the midst of slave ships, 
in the middle patch it on auction blocks, enslavement, lynching, black codes, Jim Crow, segregation, a river of resilience and resistance has been flowing. Before I'd be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. A river has been flowing, shadow beneath God's hand, I will forever stand. A river of resistance has been flowing, refusing definitions that define or limitations that confine. A river has been flowing, making a way of justice out of no way, overcoming evil, pushing past boundaries, and blazing an unbelievable path of freedom and liberation. The story continues, identifying streams now from that river that make glad the city of God. The fifth stream flows as a movement of a resistance in difficult time, flows as a movement of resilience in difficult time, in the hostile environment of racism. The fifth stream flows from God and God's river of life, hope, love, justice, resulting in streams of living water that manifest themselves in ways of witnessing to the world that God intends. Streams like Sojourner Truth, streams like Harriet Tubman and Mary McLeod Bethune, streams like Malcolm and Martin, streams like Fannie Lou Hamer, and streams like John Lewis and Amanda Gorman and Jeremiah Wright, Brian Stevenson, Washington Gladden, Yvette Plunder, Timothy Aarons. You know something about that first church because you've been a stream of living water flowing from the river of God. You've been flowing from 1852 to the present as the first white abolitionist church. You made the word of God plain by connecting your faith to social justice by building the first social justice park in America, the Washington Gladden Social Justice Park. You are a Just Peace Church, an ONA church. You are a Micah church accepting the cost and joy of discipleship by witnessing for justice and equality in the city of Columbus and the wider world. And for the past 25 years, you've been blessed to have the gift of Timothy Aarons as your pastor, priest, and prophet. There are streams flowing from the river and sheroes and heroes, some unseen and unnamed, composed of every tribe, every race, every tongue, who are keeping the faith who made a vow to God and refused to turn back. We are in the fierce urgency of now, but there is a God and there is a river and there are streams flowing from that river directly into this service, this very hour. And the invitation to us, the charge to us is to keep on keeping on. It is to be actively engaged in witnessing for the world that God intends. The Afro-Christian Convention is one of five streams and together we flow together with God as our spirit, flowing with hope because the spirit has a way of binding us all together and we flow as a movement proclaiming the gospel to all the world and resisting the powers of evil. I'm here in this service in my 85th year of life speaking to you as an elder. I'm an elder that has been nurtured and equipped by the mothers and fathers of the Afro-Christian Convention, the fifth stream. They believe, as I believe, that God is the life force in you that refuses to be defeated and that faith is always greater than fear and that good will triumph over evil. And while the storms keep raging in our lives, creating billows that roar and breakers that dash, there is a God who is still speaking. There is a river of hope that is still flowing and there are streams flowing from the river as movements of justice and equality for the world that God intends. Oh, I'm so glad. I know what is temporary and what is permanent. Hatred, that's temporary, but love is permanent. Trouble is temporary, but with the power of God's Holy Spirit working in us and through us, that is an eternal spirit that flows empowering us to do far more than we ever thought or could imagine knowing that we are equipped 
with a God, knowing that we are equipped with hope and knowing that we got the strength and courage to stand and witness for the gospel and for what we believe that God has called us to is what keeps me singing and dancing and shouting and witnessing with joy. The word from scripture, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in these times of trouble. And so we're not silent. We gonna witness. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, because the river is still flowing. And even though mountains are shaking, and power and principalities are in their own way, giving witness to another narrative, we know what our narrative is. It is a narrative that comes from God. It is a narrative about the beloved community where all of us matter. It's a narrative that allows us to be able to witness in a powerful way. We will not fear because the river is still flowing. And when the mountains tremble, the river is still flowing. And even when the powers and principalities seem to be in charge, we got a spirit in the river that is making glad the city of God. And we've got God's promise to all of us, all of us who are living in this fierce urgency of now. And we say in our church, as in many churches in the United Church of Christ, God gives us courage in the struggle for justice and peace. And we have the presence of the Holy Spirit in our trials and rejoicing. And we have eternal life in God's realm, which knows no end. And as one of your elders at 85, I want you to know, I don't feel no ways tight. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy, but I don't believe that God brought me this far to leave me. The river is flowing. The river is in you and in me. The river of hope, the river of justice, the river to stand and be the people that God has called us to be. All honor to God, all honor to God for the power of God's Holy Spirit that continues to breathe in us, move in us, enabling us to stand and witness for the world that God intends. Blessing and honor be unto you. There is a river. <laughs>